Praise the Lord. Everybody good this morning? Good fellowship, amen. Just sharing the love, sharing life together. The Lord is so good, amen. He's so good. Praise the Lord. I tell you a while ago when Brother Gary uh, shared about uh, locking eyes with the Lord, it really spoke to my heart, amen. Just uh, what a what a what a word, amen. The Lord is so good. Proverbs chapter three. We're going to go there, and then we're going to go to Malachi chapter three. I'm going to finish this today, and uh, and then uh, we'll share some on it Wednesday night. We'll take questions on it Wednesday night. And I was going to say, if you are not able to be here on Wednesday night, maybe your ox is in the ditch. <clears throat> maybe you've got oxes you need to sell so you won't have so many in the ditch <laughs> amen you're going to find out around here we just love each other right so if you're not able to be here uh, for, for reasons you know then we do have streaming uh, mercyministriesonline.com and you can go to our Facebook from there uh, that's about as tech savvy as I get uh, other than that I just ask for help <laughs> But you can join in, and you can also, uh, if you've missed something, you can go back into the sermons, the archives, or whatever, and you can catch up. And uh, maybe if the Lord speaks to your heart during a sermon, you can go back into that during the week and and revisit that, re-listen to it. Let the Lord just really, uh, you know, stir your heart on what He was saying to you. Uh, just so much today that we can uh, we have access to. So I want to encourage you. Uh, in that matter, right? So, Proverbs 3, we're teaching on uh, tithing, and uh, we'll get into offerings after this. And uh, like Brother Josh said, it is a, it is a tough subject because uh, there's just been so many, uh, so much destruction done, and the enemy's been the mastermind of that to try to rob God from the very blessings and from honoring God in this subject. Uh, Sister Wanda had shared that Wednesday night that we had taught on this in 2011, some of this, so I'll let you know how long it's been since we've taught on it. And, uh, you know, there's probably a lot of people that have missed out because, you know, it's just something that we just, you know, it's not a favored subject. My element is when they were flowing a while ago, I just want to get in that and go, right? But, you know, it's, it's one thing to come here and have a good church service. It's another thing to go back out there and live in that same environment. And we want the Lord to change us, amen? We want the Lord to, to help us. So uh, we mentioned last week, and we want to just reemphasize this, that the tithe is holy according to Leviticus 27. And I really want you to, to grasp a hold of that and catch uh, the Father's heart in that, that the tithe is, is holy. Now, we studied all that out last week. Now, I had, I had a couple of questions. I'm just going to take my time on this till we get into the Word. I had a couple of questions uh, this week, and usually uh, when you get a question asked a couple of different times, uh, then, you know, Michael Brown taught us that uh, the Lord speaks many times through the blading of the sheep. And if you listen to the flock, uh, you'll kind of, you can hear the Lord speaking through that. And so when somebody mentions something a couple of times, I begin to lend an ear to it that maybe that's a sample of what many people are, are requesting. So I was asked this week, uh, you know, about paying the tithes on the gross. That's something I taught last week. And you can go back into the, uh, our website, you can listen to that. But I pull that out of Proverbs chapter 3 and uh, verse 9. Uh, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. I shared last week that when I read that scripture several years ago, that the Lord spoke to my heart uh, on that scripture and began to teach me uh, to pay my tithe on all my increase. Now that's uh, that's where I pull that word 
the gross versus the net from. Another question was attached to that. Brother Jamie, do I pay tithes on my paycheck only? And then my answer to that is real simple. And I just want to speak the truth in love because we don't want something from you. We want something for you, right? I ask you, is your paycheck only increase? If nothing else is increased, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you, uh, you know, if, if there's something else that's increased, and I, I'm trying to say that in a, in a smooth way for you, uh, me and Sandy have paid our tithes on the cross for years. We've never missed tithes, which doesn't mean us that we're any more righteous than anybody else. But I've paid tithes on everything because when I, when increase is increase, however you want to look at it, right? And so I've paid tithes on everything, right? I do that on everything. If I sell a boat, I pay my tithes on that boat because that money is increased into my household. Now, some people are going to say, I ain't never heard of that. Well, you know, if you live like other people live, you might get to live like other people live. If you, if you look into the Word of God and you begin to let the Spirit of God speak to you and the Spirit of God teach you, right, and you begin to step into obedience in that, then I'm telling you the Lord will open up things for you. Here, when I read this scripture years ago, I'd never, never heard this come from the pulpit, never heard this taught as far as gross and net. There's a little old cute saying said, you know, you want, a, you want a net blessing or a gross blessing. And you know, that's not good enough when we want to honor God. It's not about what I want out of it. it it's His anyway, but I, we want to get to a place and a level where we live to where we honor God. And we're not, you know, God's not a slot machine. <laughs> Let me stop and, say, and be real frank about how I feel about the Lord. He's our father. He's the lover of our soul. He hung on a cross for us, paid our sin debt in full, and we're not to treat him, you know, like he's a slot machine. We're not to treat him like, well, let's see what I can get out of this. No, he's already given us eternal life. That's enough. There's many benefits he wants to give us there's many blessings he wants to give us, but he wants it to come through the, the avenue of honor. And that's where I, what I want to do is I want to shift our thinking to where that we honor God in the tithe and in the offering. Can you say amen? amen. Okay, so with that said, uh, honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all, all thine increase so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. There's the attachment to it. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So these are the scriptures that I was pulling from last week. Let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 3, and I want to teach a few minutes this morning. I got so many stories when we get off of tithing that I want to share down through the years that me and Sandy's kind of uh, maybe accumulated if I can remember all, some of them. Uh, just, just so much uh, that the Lord has done and is doing uh, in this subject. Amen. And I thought about it this morning. You know, if, if you can practice this subject and it work, then you can practice laying hands on the sick and it work. This is just one subject, right? And you can practice your faith in other areas and it work, right? So with that said. Let's read this morning. Let's start with verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? And it says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And the answer is in tithes and offerings. Now that's two separate things with a conjunction between them, right? And we're just dealing with tithes this morning. You have robbed me in tithes and 
offerings. Verse 9. Here's something I'm going to spend a little time on because this is something that Sister Patricia said the other night that many people have heard this verse and they obey God just out of fear and they never attach honor to it and don't do it right. So he says, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation. Okay, so let's take a moment and let's go to, let's deal with this word cursed a couple of times today and let's kind of see if we can understand what he's saying. Let's, let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 6. And there I want to read something. Uh, I got it on my phone. Give me just a minute. I'm going to read these scriptures, verse 17, out of the NIV. It just, it's just more helpful. It's not that I'm looking for a translation uh, that will justify the way I want to believe. It's just that it's, it's just more clear. Okay, verse 17. He's talking about Jericho here. Okay, let me explain where I'm going here. The city of Jericho was the first city in the promised land that God gave to his people, okay? They encamped at Gilgal, but when you're talking about when God moved them across the Jordan River, the first city that he gave them victory over and put it from his hands into their hands, and you know it was a miracle, right? And many people, when they uh, hear about this uh, city of Jericho, all they think about is, you know, ram's horns and walking around the walls and shouting and the walls falling down and you know the victory of the war that took place or the battle that took place there but there's more significance to this city in that when we talk about God deserves the first fruits he deserves the first and he deserves the best well Jericho was the first city that God gave them in the promised land. And note what happened right here, verse 17. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Verse 18. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and the gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord. Listen to this real close because I'm going to make a point on this. And must go into his treasury. Okay? Just... Let the Spirit just show you and speak to you and rightly divide into your spirit what the Lord says in the Scripture. He says when you go into this city and you take this city, this city is devoted to God and he uh, brought out some things, silver, gold, bronze, all These things are devoted to God and they're to go into the treasury of the Lord. Now, when you... Look at this. There was a man there, and I'll just kind of highlight it and hit a scripture here and there. There was a man there by the name of Achan. And Achan, when they went into that city, Achan found, you know, some silver, gold, and, ba and a Babylonian garment, which is monetary and materialism. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, okay? And when he saw those things, he took them and didn't tell nobody, okay? And it's interesting, and I'm going to read it to you, but it's interesting that many times, and it's the enemy that will tell us, what you do is your business. It's nobody else's business, but God said, don't take of any of these things lest you make the whole camp accursed. And that's what he said. I had a fellow tell me one time because he didn't understand the, the structure of the body of Christ. We are a body. He said, what I do when I leave church is my business. 
I was just trying to help him. Everybody wants to pastor, right? He said, what I do when I leave here is my business. I said, well, that's really not the way the Lord set it up. I mean, church is not like a workplace where you put punch a time card and you punch it when you leave. We are a family. We are a body, members of that body. And every member counts in that body. And so Aiken was probably thinking, you know, if I, if I take this and, you know, do what I want with it, it won't affect anybody else. But we're going to find that what he did affected everybody. Let me read to you in chapter 7. Let me just read you a few verses here so we can stay together this morning. In chapter 7, we find that the children of Israel, the Lord said, committed a trespass. And watch this. Achan had taken of these things, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, now listen to that real close. I would want to say, God, I shouldn't have to suffer for what Achan done if I'd have been there. I mean, that's his business. What he done, he's the one ought to be punished for that. But the Bible says that the Lord's anger was stirred against all the children over that one thing. Now, the next thing that happened was, was that they went to fight a little old city called Ai, okay? And, you know, Ai compared to Jericho was very small to where they decided, let's just take a few men, run down there and wipe it out and get that over with. And when they got down there, they got their tail kicked at Ai. 36 people died and the rest of them got chased out of town. And this little old battle was nothing like Jericho. And man, they're panicking, what's going on? And Joshua, the leader, the commander, got down on his face and started praying and started telling God, you can't let this happen. You know, look, look at what the people's going to think about you and just praying and on and on. And you know what God said? God said, get up and quit praying. Sometimes it's not a time to pray. Sometimes it's a time to act and to do what the Lord said. Let me show you that. Verse 10, the Lord said, Get, get up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? Israel hath sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. They have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled and have put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel, watch this, church. The children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people. Say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Now, we know what happens in this story, and if you don't, you can read it. But let me give you two more scriptures. Let me kind of plow through for a moment the the hard part of it, okay? I know a lot of times in church and prosperity, it's not a gospel, but the prosperity thing has ruined a lot of people. <laughs> now, John said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you'd prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Okay, but when we don't put God first, we can't prosper the way God wants us to prosper. Okay, and when we're in disobedience, let me plow through this a moment. We, God ca cannot lie. He cannot go against his word. You know, he's, he's a good father that's not gonna say, if you do that again, I'm gonna whip you. And then do, say that 10 times and never whip you. <laughs> 
He has to do what he says and he always does it for our benefit. Okay? He does it for our good. He wants to bless us. He wants to increase us. He wants us to know his ways so that we can know him. Okay? Now, let me plow through this and I'll get there. I know you want to be blessed. Amen? So look at, the, look at this here. Uh, Achan, when they kind of got it all, everybody out of the way and figured out it was Achan, verse 20 and 22 says, Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Watch this. When I saw lust of the eyes among the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, and 50 shekels of weight, then I, I coveted them. I coveted them. Let me, let me stop and say something. The Adamic nature has got covetousness buried in it. It's got greed buried in it, right? And it works against the principles of God, okay? I coveted those things. It's the enemy that will, when you're on the straight and narrow, when you're being led by the Spirit of God into God's best, it's the enemy that wants to put distractions out there, colorful distractions, right? That lure us away from the will of God. And this is what happened right here to Achan. He said, I coveted these things. And he said, and I took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Achan was thinking, if I take these devoted things and I hide them, Okay, nobody's going to know it but me. But you know, there's two, there's two things to deal with there. Number one, there's God to deal with. And then number two, there's a conscience to deal with. Amen? Can I get a witness in the house? How many of you love me this morning? <laughs> Amen. And so here, amen, the Bible teaches us something that we need to look at real close. Okay, and I'm working my way out of this. But these things that Achan took, and what does that, his name mean? It means trouble, okay? And he brought trouble on himself. He brought trouble on his marriage. He brought trouble on his family. And he brought trouble on the whole camp. Amen? So one, one part of the curse and when we read that word, we're thinking God's going to curse somebody and they're going to walk around with a spell on them. No, that's not what it's teaching. What it's teaching is self-inflicted trouble. And I'll go somewhere else with you in a moment. Self-inflicted destruction when we're not walking in the ways of God. I want to get off this just as bad as you do, so y'all help me a minute. Amen. But it's the truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Okay? So there's, there's things that we have to look at here. And the Bible says that these things that he took were supposed to go into the treasury of the Lord. I read you that in Joshua. Okay? Now, with that said... Let's go to Matthew, I mean Malachi again, chapter number 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes, all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, up in verse 8, it said, You've robbed me in tithes and offerings. But he didn't say that the offerings belong to the storehouse. But he said the tithes did. Now when we get on offerings, you'll hear me say stuff like, hey, you can give your offerings to St. Jude, which is a good thing. 
You can give your offerings to the neighbor down the street as the Lord leads you. But when it comes to the holy tithe according to the word of God, the tithe goes into the storehouse, into the house of God. Okay? Now it's clear right there. It's, it's, it's uh, cut and dried. I'm not getting a lot of amens on it, but I mean it's the word of the Lord right here. And so when I look at this, I see that Achan took, which we could say is part of the tithe of Jericho, are the first fruits of God in the promised land for himself and hid it. And he brought trouble on himself. And I want to encourage you, church. I want to say this again. I want to take my time. We don't tamper with holy things. Now, you know, I've heard it all just about it. I've been in the ministry 30 years or 31 years, and I've heard, I've heard some good ones, okay? But I've heard people say, you know, uh, I don't know what they're doing with my tithes, so I'm just going to do it myself. Well, that's an independent spirit. That's not what the Bible teaches. Let me tell you what God will do. God will take care of that. If you don't believe it, you go back over into 1 Samuel where the uh, te uh, temple at Shiloh, first temple in the promised land was. And there, there was a priest by the name of Eli. And he had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, or Hophni and Phinehas, or you just name them whatever you want to name them. All them names is hard to pronounce. And they was over there, and what the people would do is the people would come up to Eli and, the, and his two sons and the people working the church, and they'd bring their meat for the offering. And they would have the meat balling. And they would have literally, I'll give it, give it to you in George County language, a pitchfork, if you will. And when they walked up to that pot, the two sons, the people on staff, would poke it in there, and whatever they brought out was theirs. And that's the custom. That's what they've done. Well, history teaches us, uh, Flavius Josephus and historians teach us, that they literally were so wicked that they widened the forts out. And they'd job it in there and get more. <laughs> Right? Not realizing. That's people's worship right there you're fooling with. That's not just a piece of meat. Somebody brought that to God this morning. That's not just a $20 bill. Somebody brought that to God. And the people were complaining to Eli, the priest. Hey, your, your sons are wicked. And all he would do was slap them on the hand. And God showed up. And they went out to war one day with the Ark of the Covenant and both them sons got killed in a battle. The Ark got taken. When word got back to Eli, what happened? He was sitting on a stool, a seat in the temple. The Bible says he fell off and broke his neck and he died right there. He was a heavy man. In other words, he was getting heavy on the, God, on the ties. Well, he was heavy literally, but you know where I'm going with that. So don't worry about what God will take care of his stuff. You just bring as an act of worship to the Lord. I want to say that because, man, I've, I've, I've been put in, in some corners. One time this family, I'm not going to meddle too long, but one time this family invited me and Sandy over to dinner after church. It's a rare occasion. <laughs> Don't invite us to dinner. We, we, we'll, we'll fellowship with you another day. I'm wore out after church, right? I appreciate you. Here and there, I will eat your groceries. But, uh, <laughs> but this, this uh, family got over and son, they had that spread. They had T-bone steaks. And they had the spread. And I'm thinking, man, yeah, you know, we sit down there. We eat. About the time I got to the tea. On the on the my steak, wasn't nothing left but the tea. He looked across the table and asked me, he said, Brother, I want to ask you a question. And I felt like this was going to be one of them questions. How do you feel about me taking my ties? This is after I eat his steak. <laughs> How do you feel about me taking my ties and helping this fella down the road? You know, I'm just paraphrasing. And I just, you know, there you are. You just eat his steak. <laughs> 
He, he had you where he wanted you. Except he didn't know Brother Millard raised me. And Brother Millard used to say, well, it ain't how I feel. It's what the Word of God says. See, that'll get you out every time. It's, it's not how I feel. I, I like your steak. It's good. But you ain't getting that steak back. <laughs> right? But it's not how I feel. It's not my opinion. You know, uh, preachers are supposed to be like male men and women. We don't put, we don't do the mail. We just put it in the box, right? And I don't mean that in the wrong way, but I'm just telling you, it's what the Word of God says is what's important. It's not that we're buddies and we can, you know, I, I, you know, I'm gonna melt here at your kitchen table and you know, give in and compromise. No, it's what God says, and God says in verse ten. Bring all the tithe, not the offerings, the tithe into the storehouse that there would be meat in my house. Now, that brings me to another point in my plowing here before we get through with this point. It's not optional where we tithe, how we tithe. Okay, people say, well, I, you know... Uh, the church needs a water hose. I'm going to go buy a water hose and just knock it off my ties. <laughs> Make sure you buy the best water hose just like you was going to buy at your house. That's the way I live. When I, that's the way. See, when your affections are set on the house of God, you don't go to the, you don't, we don't go to uh, the dollar store and buy a water hose and then get for the church and then go to Jack's and buy us one. See, the Lord, the Lord's, everything's a test of our heart. Well, I don't know why I brought that up. Did anybody buy a water hose lately? <laughs> but people say, well, I'm just going to help somebody down the road and use my tithe. Don't, don't do that because the tithes are holy. Listen, the Lord will provide for you if he opens a door for you to bless somebody. Don't tamper with what's holy. The Lord will bless you. He will put a ram in the thicket for you. He'll take care of you. Okay? So with that said, y'all good? Let's move on here because I want to get to this good part too. Now, let's move a little bit further here. In uh, verse 10, and, and, and the scripture says, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord. Okay? Here's what the Lord said right there. He said, on this subject, try me in this and see what I'll do for you. Okay? Try me in this and see what I'll do for you. What it is, is that the Lord is just simply proving our heart. He's testing our heart is what he's doing. But yet, with that said, he says, "Here's I'm laying this procedure out for you and I want you to try me in what I say. Try me. Just try me and see if I won't prove. Now here's what he said right here. He said, because there's a, a reward attached to every command, he says right here, prove me in this, says the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out on you a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Wait a minute. This is crazy stuff. God, according to David, 1 Chronicles 29, 14, God is going to give me of his and tell me if you'll give me 10% back as a holy worship to me, that I'm going to pour out heaven on you for doing that after you just gave it all to me. I mean, really. What if God had, from the start would have said, we're going to do this thing 50-50? <laughs> he said, we're going to do it. Now, we're talking about the tithe only. We're going to do it 90-10. I'm going to give you 90. That's a pretty good deal. When he gives us health, 
to be able to make the money, when he gives us skills and wisdom and talents, right? When he blesses our hands to know how to do stuff, and then he sets something down here on earth because everything's his, and he gives us a job, and he gives us favor, and he gives us that increase, and then he says, here's what I'm requiring of you, and it's only to prove our heart. It's only to prove our heart. That's all it's about. God don't need an allowance. God don't need, he's not up there worried about how am I gonna keep the lights on at Mercy Ministries. He owns Sangin' River. He owns Mississippi Power. He owns Alabama Power. He owns it all. He's not worried about, it, it is a relationship between us that the Lord is saying that I'm gonna give you something. Greed is gonna battle you. Covetous is gonna battle you. But if you'll wade through that and trust me and obey me and honor me in this, he says, try me now in this and see if I want him, that's him, that he won't open up the windows, that's plural, in heaven and pour you out a blessing, that's singular, and there won't even be room enough to contain one of his blessings. One of them. One of them. Do you know that the favor of God is worth more than all the certificates and degrees and everything you could ever get? <laughs> Do you realize that God wants to bless you? He wants to pour out on you. Think about pouring out, pouring out. That means it's coming from above. A lot of times we get hung up on uh, money amounts. No, God can pour you out wisdom to help you make decisions that save you thousands of dollars and make you thousands of dollars. <laughs> One time years ago, and I got, I got enough stories to get you dinner cold. But I'm gonna spare you this morning. One time years ago, me and Brother Don Cochran was working on my tractor. And I bought a little old 40 horse John Deere tractor when we bought our property over here that the Lord give, give us a miracle. I got another story on that. Another one. And so we're, we're, Working, I, I told him, I said, brother, I don't know, you know, I'm analyzing here with all my mechanical degrees. I said, I don't know if it's the fuel filter, if it's trash in the, in the system. I don't know if it's a fuel pump. I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm telling somebody that does this what I think. I said, every time you get on my tractor and you get on a little incline, brother Michael, you're the maintenance supervisor at John Deere. You'll want to hire me after this story. <laughs> And I forgot he was sitting there. And, and I said, my tractor goes to spitting and sputtering and goes dead. It won't run unless you're on level ground. So he comes over there, he's working on it. And I done spent about $400 on this joker. And I told him right over there, I remember right where I said, I said, the Lord's gonna tell us what's wrong with this thing. And he'd give me that, yeah, he is. Like, I <laughs> wish he'd hurry. And... <laughs> So he got on it and was driving it along there and he got on, I said, get on the incline, I'll, I'll show you. He got on the incline, it went spitting and sputtering and went dead. And like the, a light bulb went off. I said, brother, it's that button under that seat. Something ain't holding that button down. That seat's wore out or something. Hey, we took a two cent tie wrap and put over that button and held it down. Don't, don't tell the insurance company is, brother Mike. We held that, uh, that safety down and you could drive it nearly upside down it'd keep running. <laughs> and it wasn't even that, it was this flat bar on the seat wore out. And we done spent about $400, but the Lord poured wisdom out on me standing there. 
Now, I'm, uh, that's maybe funny to some of y'all, but that's the way it works. It's not about, ah, right, I paid time. Let's see what I'm going to get out of it. No, it's not always coming back in money, although one day it probably will end up that way. But it's the wisdom to make a right decision in the right place to see things that God pours out on you and shows you stuff in life that blesses you to the point that it's beyond money. It's money and a testimony for what the Lord will do for you. Right? Uh, let me hit this. I'm, I got to close right here. That's just one of my stories. I got a bunch of them. He would said he would pour you out or empty out upon you a blessing. There would not be room enough to contain it. So here's another part of the curse right here is that people live under closed windows in a shut up heaven. It's not about a spell being put on anybody. That's not what he's talking about. But when we don't align ourselves up with the principles of God, we tie the Lord's hands up, we shut up heaven over Him, the windows are closed over our life where we're living. Can I get a witness? Many times, many times, not every time, but many times, Christians are in the financial debt and struggles that we're in because we have not followed biblical guidelines in finances. And when we do that with the tithes, we position ourselves up under an open heaven every time. There's no way around it. I'm telling you, when you do what God says do, God's going to do what he said he would do. Look at one more verse right here. Okay, he said, prove me in this. See if I won't do it. And he said, there shall not be room enough. Room enough. You know what that means? That means now I'm going to be living in a place where I can give. Luke 12. I'm not going to tear down my barns. I'm going to give out of my barns. Because he said your barns would be filled. And that's the principles of the word of God. Can I get a witness on that? Brother Jamie, I wish he'd hurry. That's what he's saying. <laughs> that's what the Lord's saying. He's saying, I, I've laid the procedure out for you. Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing and all of that. See, the enemy will lie to you. He'll tell you like when you drive out of your driveway going to church like he's done me. Here comes this guy in this big old 40-foot boat, Brother Joe. And man, it's a deep sea rig. You, you could use that. He said, look at there. If you didn't pay tithes, you'd buy one of them. They're like this guy, I'm going to church one day and it's hunting season. I like to hunt. And I'm driving and turn down this road behind this guy that's hunting on Sunday morning when I'm going to church. Got a big old buck laying up in the back of the truck with his tailgate down. <laughs> and I'm right behind it. And the devil said, look at there. <laughs> I just tell that joke, I'd have passed up on that one to shoot the one the Lord was going to send me. Now we're preaching. I got to close. Verse 11. Verse 11. And I will, the Lord says, if you do this, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. For your sakes. I will rebuke the devourer. And he shall not, he, and when the Lord says that, friend, there ain't no demon in hell can, can override the word of God. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So he said that he would destroy the devourer. Sometimes the devourer is trying to destroy your blessing, your reward, your increase, your fruit. You know, your devourer may be poor management. Your devourer may be poor discipline and God begins to give you wisdom, wisdom, wisdom on how to counter what's coming against you because you're lining up with his principles. Come on, Brother Gary, I got to close. 
And I said something last week, and this is a pretty good, pretty good deal. I said something last week, and I'll close again on this. You know, nowhere in this Bible, I've heard people say that from the pulpit, giggling and carrying on, but nowhere in this Bible does it say if a man has made a mistake in this area that he's got to go back and retribute God for it and pay back tithes. Okay, now y'all like that. Somebody did. Somebody streaming, you liked that, didn't you? But it does require repentance. It does require an humble heart getting before God and saying, Lord, you know what? Nobody around here may not know it, but I'm one of those that's robbed you. And I want to repent and I want to get my life in order in this area because I want to be blessed. And God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to prosper. And it's not some old uh, uh, flaky, fake gospel that tells everybody, sow all your seed and I, God's going to meet all you need. It's not any of that. It's simple biblical principles that God says, do this and I'll do this. Right? Do this and I'll do this. And we learn as we walk with him. I know I'm going to get rewarded. I know I'm going to get blessed. I know I'm going to, the Lord's going to pour out on me. But I don't even do it for that anymore. I do it because I realize how good he is to me. And I love him and I appreciate him. And I'm glad that I'm not where I used to live. He's letting me live here in the promise, promises, promised land. And I do it out of gratitude. I do it out of honor toward him. With that said, I'm asking the Lord to shift our whole thinking in this area. No, we're not, we're not wanting anything from you. We're wanting everything for you. Right? We're wanting everything for you. Sister Sonia's sending out them contribution statements yearly. Okay, so when you look at that, you let the Lord speak to your heart. Now when we get off of this subject after Wednesday night, after we answer a few questions, maybe moving along, when it comes to offerings, hey, the Lord will lay that on your heart anywhere. He will. And you'll get to where, man, this is so rewarding to give. So rewarding to be generous. For God so loved the world that he gave. And he'll put that spirit on you. Okay? It's rewarding. But when it comes to the tithe, I just want to encourage us to be real careful. Because that's holy. That's holy. And it belongs in the storehouse of the Lord. That's holy. When you start honoring them biblical principles, everything starts shifting. It's like the, it's like the front, like yesterday, the weather's leaving, clouds are getting out over top of your head, sun starts shining, the Lord starts pouring on you. He'll do it. He'll do it. You Listen, in closing, come on, let's stand. That'll help me. You don't have to be where you are today six months from now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It don't take God a lifetime. It don't take God a lifetime. You start doing what God teaches you to do. So, well, oh, so-and-so, don't worry about so-and-so. You take them scriptures and you sit down and you start reading that and let the Lord speak to you. And everything's going to shift for you. Everything's going to change for you. Amen? Everything is going to change for you. Let's do this this morning. Because we're on this subject, let's just all come this morning. If you need the Lord, we'll pray with you in that matter. If you need prayer over healing in your body, whatever, we'll pray for anything. But right now, let's just, while we're on this subject, let's just come before the Lord over this subject. Right? Let's... Let's ask the Lord. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to just give us 
direction here, guidance, wisdom. Okay, let's, let's ask the Lord to speak to our heart and show us. Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying to me? You know, I had a thought I'm going to share with this with you before I, before I shut down. But I had a thought about Achan and him trespassing against what the Lord said and how it affected everybody. Okay? A lot of times we don't understand the power of all, the power of unity. And it's not just about the treasury of the Lord here. Watch this. But if everybody that's connected to this body took these principles and started doing what the Lord is saying, what's going to happen is it's going to flow into your households. It's going to flow into your households. It's going to make a change everywhere because just imagine a commanded corporate blessing over this body. It's going to flow into your households. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm like Brother Gary says. I'm jealous for people to be blessed. I, I really am. I am. I am jealous for people to be blessed. I want to see the day where a man tells me I don't have to go work a shutdown. I don't have to go work seven twelves anymore. I want to see that day, and I believe God can give it to us. Is anything too hard for the Lord to where that our men can work here and serve the house of God and be just as blessed as anybody else or more? So I'm asking you for that, Lord. That's, that's my prayer, is that God would, as we line up, as that God would bless our church body in such a way that overtime is an option for us. Really, really. I mean, we're talking about a man that didn't even have a job and none of his disciples had a job and the tax collectors come to him and said, you got to pay taxes. He said, okay, Peter, go get you a hook and throw it in the water. Didn't even tell him to bait it. Throw you a hook in the water, catch a fish, pull the fish out. There's going to be a coin in that fish's mouth and pay our taxes. How about that for supernatural? It goes back to saying, who are we really trusting in? We're talking about a man that took a few fishes and a few loaves and looked up to heaven and blessed them and broke them and fed 5,000 besides the women and children. Either we've bought into a fraud or he's still Jesus. Right? And so with that said, if this whole church body said, you know what, I'm finna prove God. I'm gonna try him. It's not gonna give the staff any raise. It's for you. It's for you. It's for all of us to where we go home and all of a sudden, because the Lord's storehouse and His barn is blessed, it's trickling down into our storehouse, and we're being blessed. Be it unto us, Lord. Be it unto us. How about that for the prosperity message? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Y'all remember what I said last week in closing, don't you? Me and Sandy, when we got married, the first thing we done is had to finance a septic tank. And that's the truth. 900 bucks, butch rouse for a modest fee. But you know what? Over the years of faithful giving... I'll buy you a septic tank if you're in a bind. Now, don't come running up here act like you need a new septic tank if you don't need one. (laughs) 
Lord, I bless our church body. I pray, Lord, that we catch your heart in this. That, Lord, we're not emulating any other church body the first of this year, trying to jump on board or some, something going on. That we're just saying, what are you saying to us? Lord, I pray that we capture your heart in this, that we, Lord, that we, we practice, we practice the word of God, that we walk it out. And Lord, according to what you said, according to what you said, Lord, you said, if we would do this, you would open up the windows. Windows, Lord, windows. <laughs> Get some big old windows like Sandy likes. And big old windows of the storehouse and pour out a blessing on us that there's not enough room to receive it. That's the word of the Lord, church. That's the word of the Lord.